um, ACP stands for Ancillary Control Processor. Um, that's the architecture that we inherited from RSX11, uh, where the file system actually runs as a separate server process. And we did ODS1 that way, and way back in the earliest versions of VMS, we also did ODS2 that way. And then when we developed clusters, in VMS version 4, we switched over to what's called the XQP, which stands for Extended QIO Processor. Um, in that design, the file system runs in the context of the user process that's doing the operation. So instead of, um, right, instead of taking a request and shipping it to this other process, we just take this request, dive into kernel mode, and handle it in the context of the process. And the reason for that um, was that we needed explicit locking across the cluster. Right. With an ACP, the ACP did one file operation at a time. Um, and so you get implicit synchronization out of that. Right now, As long as you don't try to create two files at the same time, you're never going to have any kind of a conflict with resources. Um, well, when you're working in a cluster, you need explicit synchronization because shipping these things across the cluster um, and, uh, you know, and, and having a single server process, we decided was a really bad idea because if you do that, then you have to solve the failover problem, which would, you know, say you have one, you have one ACP that, that's handling all of the file operations and all of a sudden that node goes down. Now you have to take everything that it has and move it, you know, pick up the pieces and move them to another cluster node. And that's really difficult. difficult. More important, it's difficult to debug um, because it doesn't happen very often. Um, and so we looked at that and we just said, you know what, we're much better off um, doing everything with explicit synchronization using the lock manager, that mechanism gets used all the time, and that way it's going to be much easier to prove that it works. And so that, uh, that's why we switched to that architecture. Um, and it also had the added benefit that we could do more file operations in parallel. Uh, because, for example, if you, you know, if First of all, if you're operating on different volumes, right, there's no conflict at all. And those, those operations can proceed completely in parallel. And even if you're trying to do multiple operations on the same disk, right, some things have to be synchronized. Like if you're going to the bitmap to allocate space, right, that had better be one at a time. But on the other hand, updating a directory, uh, yeah, yeah, you can, you can update two, two different directories concurrently. That's fine. Yeah, so we got better concurrency out of that as well. Um, we had another experience um, back in the 1990s um, where um, a group tried to develop a new file system for VMS. Um, this was called Spiralog. Um, some folks may have heard of this. Um, it never made it out as a product um, because while, while the design was very advanced and elegant, um, it had some very serious architectural problems. Um, and one of its problems turned out to be that they tried to build it as a single server file system in a cluster. So they were trying, they were trying to go back to the, the ACP model where a file, a file operation would be shipped to a server node. Yeah handle there and then ship back to um, the user. And when all was said and done, they discovered that three cluster members could totally saturate an alpha server node running this file system. And right, the performance just ended up to be awful. Um, 